Online delivery of digital content's not new. Um, you know, Steam's been around for a long time. Is this going to be an evolution of that? Do, do you think something like this streaming platform will take hold? Well, look, I think streaming is going to be important. Um, and while I'm under NDA and I can't talk about what Google's going to be talking about today at 10 a.m., I can say that um, they've made a massive investment and created some amazingly cool technology. But it's not clear to me that, that streaming is going to turn out, say, the way it has with film and TV with a single dominant player in Netflix. Um, there's just a lot more going on in the gaming industry, and the technology is harder to master for games than it is for any sort of video content. And the, the gaming industry doesn't seem to be <laughs> quite as asleep at the switch uh, as Hollywood was perhaps in some other industries that have sort of been, been taken on by digital revolutions. Um, how do you think this is likely to play? Is, is this going to be sort of a, a niche within gaming? Will there still be reason to have uh, devices that have local content on them for, for speed and reliability? Well, look, first off, um, one of the reasons you don't see some of the things that are affecting TV affect gaming is because gaming's probably a decade ahead. And, and what I mean by that is just they're using processors more efficiently. There's a lot more going on. And I think you make a great point. I, I think that while streaming is going to be the best solution for certain types of game experiences, there'll be other game experiences that are better off with a local processor under your TV or on, on the device if you're playing on a phone. And so my sense is we're going to see a blend of streaming uh, native applications on devices like phones and consoles and PCs. And then you're going to see some hybrid. Uh, where part of the game will come from a server and from a streaming location, and then other things will be happening local on device. And remember, what makes a game different than a movie? The next frame you're about to see has never been seen by anyone ever before. It's being created by the gamer, which means that technology is radically different than a film, where it sits in a library and the, frame, the next frame has been known for sometimes 20 years. It's, it's a very different thing to get content from a, from a server to a consumer in a world where the next frame is being created, literally, one sixtieth of a second at a time. John, how much of this technology will be specific to the video game industry, and how much of it, whether it's what you're developing at Unity or some of these other technologies we're seeing across the industry, will have broader applications to other sectors? So my sense is that a lot of it is going to end up being um, specific to the gaming industry, and again, because of that technology challenging. What I, what I would tell you is some of the same issues remain. You're going to want to have a server as close to the consumer as possible to shorten that distance and to have fewer switches between, say, the server that serves content to a user and the user. But I fully expect there to be a, a different presentation to the consumer. With Netflix, it's all streaming. With Spotify, it's all streaming. I think most consumers outside of you know, television and, and music, when they're looking at you know, game applications, are likely to end up with some combination of a device in their home or a device in their hand or their pocket for certain types of game applications and others that are coming off of a server. I expect it to be a blend. What's the business model going to be and is it going to be at odds with the game industry's uh, traditional motivations and models? Is this uh, Google, Amazon, uh, et cetera, wanting to fold these into subscription services like we're about to see from Apple? Apple could get into this game too, pay 10 or 15 bucks a month and get access to a huge library of games? Well, you've hit on the, perhaps one of the biggest points of tension that I expect to see unfold as game streaming ends up you know, larger scale. So what you may not know is the 25 largest entertainment applications in the world are all games. They're all over a billion dollars in revenue. And that's per year. You don't see any movies grossing over a billion dollars in a year. You don't see any musical acts grossing over a billion dollars in a year. No novels gross over a billion dollars. No television grosses over a billion dollars. But games do because they have a much larger audience. There's a couple billion, two and a half billion people playing games every month globally. So these are big intellectual properties. And so these billion-dollar franchises are going to have, I think, a bit of a challenge in figuring out how to sort economics when they're getting a piece of a $10 or a $15 monthly subscription. So therein right. lies a bit of the challenge and a bit of the tension. The content creators, the Activisions, Electronic Arts, the other major, you know, Tencent even, that create this stuff is, is going to seek economics that work for them 
And of course, what right. anybody that sort of aggregates for streaming is going to want to try to get to that Netflix model of a 10, maybe it's $15 a month. And they're not necessarily copacetic. 